Hey, what's going on everybody? Legend in here. Um, today I have a kind of a different video. Um, I don't know what's going to be going up, but today is my day off from school, so I thought I'd take this time to talk about something that came up recently when I was talking to one of my friends who's a little less into Star Wars, but just enough to understand everything and watch everything. So what was going on was we were in our class and we were just talking about Rebels and stuff like that, and we got to the part where Obi-Wan was fighting Darth Maul, and Two of my friends said they didn't really like it, how like how short it was, which, you know, I understood. I, I kind of agreed with that when it first came out, but watching the scene multiple times and like understanding the layers of it, and, like what it represents and like both characters and what's happening to them and what's happened to them in their past really changes like why what happened was important. The first point I brought up was how Obi Wan knew what Darth Maul was gonna do. Now, what Maul did was exactly what he did to Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan's master, all the way back in The Phantom Menace, and um, in the video you see how he did exactly what he was going to do. He went for like the headbutt with his saber hilt and was going to spin around and hit him in the back like he did with Qui-Gon right here. This shows that both characters have different stories. Maul is caught up on the past, That's what, and hence why he uses the exact same like fighting style. Obi-Wan has learned from his master's mistakes and has learned how to deal with this old person. He originally took on his original form of fighting, uh, I think it was like form 4 or whatever he was akin with, which is the exact same fighting stance he did when he was fighting Maul but in the first time. But this time he adopted the defensive stance or like whatever um, was the safer stance, like the more mature and obedient stance which reflects how he's grown past being what he was he started off with his original fighting stance representing his past and now it represents his, him right now how he's become more obedient and more tamed and what i enjoyed about how short it was was it being short like it started the moment maul talks about loot no protecting Someone. That is Obi-Wan's one purpose, to protect Luke. The moment Maul mentions Luke, he was already dead. Which is kind of sad, but that's the way it was going to work. Obi-Wan was going to fight till his death to protect Luke. Obi-Wan found something bigger than himself to be, which was the protector of Luke. While Maul was still caught up on destroying the Sith, which is his own goal. Which is why, you know, he was talking to Ezra and trying to manipulate him to helping him destroy the Sith and get revenge or whatever. So that's why I thought the fight was just the right amount. It was short and clean. It was exactly what it needed to be. And for those who wondered how Maul died, everyone actually cut through the center of Maul's saber and sliced down the center of his chest. Unlike Maul's original saber, which was actually two lightsabers basically glued together at the centers, which means that you could cut down the center and both of them would still work. This one was the Inquisitor Saber, which he stole from one of the Inquisitors before this event of Rebels, which we see him using in Twilight of the Apprentice. Um, this one would just deactivate the moment it was cut, which is why it did exactly that. So this is a little different video. I might be doing more Star Wars talks um, whenever I get the opportunity to. But yeah, that's today's video. Um, hope you all enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And see you later.